You know, reporters seldom get to be uh, part of an event when it takes place. We wind up writing about things afterward and talking to witnesses and the police and authorities. But a little more than 25 years ago, I was on the front row. An official state witness for the execution of Ted Bundy, the most notorious serial killer of our time. And this is how I remember it. Two prison guards led him into the death chamber at 7 a.m., each arm manacled to the guards on either side. Bye -bye, Ted Bundy, the execution is scheduled at 7 a.m. About time this man die. There was a lot of excitement about it. It was almost a carnival atmosphere out there. We're looking at signs that say Friday and Burn Bundy. There was total disrespect for the execution of a human being. Now, all they were saying was Ted Bundy. Uh, we were saying Ted Bundy and a human being in there. It was a sight of evil I think I'd never suspected I would see. He stopped in the doorway, and that's the part that's in my head. What do we have here, Ken? Let's... He didn't weigh more than 185, 90 pounds. He wasn't a huge man. He was under six feet, 5'10", 5'11". And he looked at us with the strangest look. 25 years later, with the execution in 1989, I, I had no idea that I would remember these details. I, I wish it had been photographed. Did anybody, nobody shot it. They're not gonna let anybody shoot it. Well, why? Well, because it's, it's so anti-civilization. Well, for that reason, it should be seen. Of course, Hollywood has tried to recreate the execution scene, but this overly dramatized version is not what I saw that day. One of the differences that's clearly obvious here is that the video puts him here in a prison shirt. He's not in a prison shirt at all. They portray this man, this, this, this condemned man, to be in shock. Bundy was not in shock at all. He was in control of his, he appeared to be in control of his emotions. Do you have a final statement you'd like to make? And he said, Before give my love to my family up. and my friends. When they put the mask on him, mm -hmm. they tightened the mask so tight, it twisted his head like this. It came oh. up like that. It was about a two foot wide slit, mm -hmm. and behind that wall is the execution and we could only see the person's head and two eyes. It then occurred to me that I'm looking at makeup on both eyes. It looked very much like a woman, which, which would have been appropriate since he had killed so many women. Eight days later, Bundy turns the sorority house into a bloodbath. The young women that he assaulted were in their 20s, except for the one victim that we know of, who was a kid, a 12-year-old from Lake City that he murdered. You used to feel safe being out, and after that, as a woman, you didn't. I just remember that. And so it was not just the death of the people, it was the sort of a death of an innocence. Then a sudden jerk snapped his body back, and it was over. His life ended in a matter of minutes. We know that he took hours and days to execute his victims and put them through an unbelievable hell on earth. And within minutes, Ted Bundy was dead. His fists tightly clenched, body rigid in the chair that was made by inmates many years ago. Taking of a life is, uh, is <laughs> we're not supposed to do that. Uh, nobody's supposed to do that. There's nothing like seeing a serial killer of this magnitude executed. There's nothing that compares to this because it shapes your whole uh, senses about what life is about. More than anything else, there's a, there's a feeling of relief that it's over. Uh, and that I think the justice has been served after a long time. Ted Bundy, you're dead! And I think when I left, I, I, was, I was less a proponent of capital punishment. It's not something I lost a lot of sleep over. It is not something that uh, really troubled me afterward. But what it does in reminding me of the details is bring back a lot of the, uh, I guess, the overwhelming sensation of relief when this thing was over. I think I got a different appreciation of life during this episode. The body will likely be buried in a pauper's grave near the prison here at Stark. Now I want to show you something here. This is a comparison of the old sketch that was done 25 years ago and the new one we just did, our artist did, and you can, you can see they're really a very similar. 
I want to thank Channel 10 for some of that video, by the way, and Hedel Gandhi for doing a great job on the production work here with me. And as I mentioned, the details are still very clear in my mind. And this is something, Kelly, that I will never, ever forget. Hearing you talk about it, the way you talked about it, I mean, it was so vivid. It seemed 25 years ago, but it seemed like it was yesterday thing, hearing comes, you discuss it. Comes that, back. And comes that's back why I'm so glad you shared that with us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, they, they did a great job helping me with it, and I, I appreciate know. that. And thinking about the victims, too. 